Test Egg 16 Cryo Test and Ship 30 Static Fire at Massey's. Module 5 ready for rollout at Sanchez. Internal walls going up in the new office at the build site. And earthworks and foundation continue for pad B at the launch site. Hello everyone, my name is BJ and welcome to RGV Aerial Photography's Starbase Flyover Update Episode 52. We'll be covering these and more updates at SpaceX's facilities at Starbase Texas. Fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the flight. We'll start here at Massey's test site and later make our way east to the rest of Starbase. Here's a labeled map to get your bearings. Thanks to Procky for creating maps each week. Beginning at the flame trench, we can see Ship 30 preparing for its static fire, which took place on Friday, 26 of July. Thank you to Rocket Ranch for providing this amazing view of the test. Later, SpaceX would treat us to an all new view in an ex-post from under the ship in extreme slow motion. Have a full look on their X account as the full slow motion video stretches the four and a half second static fire to over three and a half minutes. The ship was then transported back to the build site, put on a transport stand, and is now sitting at the old engine install station at Sanchez. At the new structural test stand, we can see test tank 16 undergoing a cryogenic proof test. This image also shows the tank farm well and truly active, including frosty cryo supply and drain lines. After completing this test, the tank was removed from the stand and rolled back to the production site on Saturday 27th of July, and as we'll see later, can be seen inside the Star Factory. That's all for Massey's, on to Sanchez. Refer to this map as we take a look around the site. Starting at the transport stands and Star Factory work stand construction area, not much progress has taken place here as the weather hasn't cooperated during the past few days. But as you can see, lots of structures are going to be built here pretty soon. We will keep you updated on this. At the tower staging area, Module 5 is preparing to be transported to pad for stacking, and in fact, it was moved later that day. Module 6 would be the next to be transported and arrive at the launch site July 31st. This will be the last one before the CC8800-1 crane will be laid down to get its extension to stack the last three modules. And speaking about those, Module 9 being the highest one and containing the pulley system for the chopsticks as this green tarp right where the pulleys go. We don't know if this is in preparation for the installation of this system or to protect that area. We will also keep you updated on this. Now let's check the chopsticks that are waiting for the tower to be fully stacked. When ready, they will be moved to the pad and assembled with the carriage. These shorter chopsticks are almost complete with minor items missing that we expect to be installed after integration with the tower. We do not expect any major work on them in the near future. Finally, the parking garage has now seen use with at least two floors filled with cars. This will help move the majority of cars off the sides of Highway 4, preventing accidents and saving the employees a lot of time. Now let's take a look at the build site. Now at the build site, we've seen some major hardware updates for Starship Block 2. Due to the low altitude flyover this week, Refer to this map from last week as we make our way around the site. Starting off with Mega Bay 2, we can see some white staircase sections staged beside the bay. Other than that, there are no more white steel beams remaining, suggesting the worker access structures inside the bay have been almost completely installed. On July 26th, we saw yet another piece of Ship 33, the first Block 2 starship, exit the Star Factory. This section, captured by Lab Padre, is the forward methane section of Ship 33 and will be stacked below the nose cone and three ring payload base seen in last week's photo. We can also verify that a PEZ dispenser was installed inside the payload section, as the stand was later seen moved out of the front corner of Mega Bay 2. Before moving on, it's worth mentioning that Ship 30 was briefly staged in Mega Bay 2 for about 12 hours before moving to the Rocket Garden, as seen in this image from Starbase Surfer. 
Now moving on to Mega Bay 1, Booster 12's hostage ring was moved into the bay on July 29th ahead of installation in a promising sign that the Flight 5 booster will be flying soon. There were no noticeable changes with boosters 13, 14, and 15. Our last stop is at the office building where we notice that corrugated roof sheeting is being laid atop the third roof layer, which is at a lower height than the other two. We can expect the concrete pour to occur within the next week. On the side of the office building facing south towards Star Factory, what looks like metal studs have been installed along some floors in preparation of glass installation, which would begin July 29th. With that, let's move on to the launch site where we can finally see progress toward the flame trench for Orbital Launch Pad B. Just a quick reminder to like this video if you enjoyed our work so that it can reach a larger audience. Let's take a look at last week's labeled map before we get started. This week, the launch site is a bit distant due to the low altitude flight. The rain that fell leading up to the flight really shows in this wide shot with the wetlands flooded all around. Stacking continues with the second orbital launch tower. Module 4 is seen here connected to the crane prior to being lifted on the tower later that day. Tower Module 5 would be transported to the launch site in the early hours of July 26th. While the flame trench excavation can be seen flooded here, along the side we see sheet piles being placed. Last week, we saw the four pipe piles and beams that serve as an alignment structure to place the sheet piles in a straight line. While it doesn't seem to have started any work, the MC28HD drill rig has been lifted vertical just to the right of the pile work. Checking in on the square excavation, no visible change can be seen from this angle. However, concrete was seen poured at the base likely a rat slab in preparation for foundation rebar work. At the current D2 entrance, concrete has been cut and cleared around the piles seen in last week's images. It is still unclear what will be placed here. Speculation included that blue or tankenstein might have been moved here, however blue would be removed from the tank farm and leave Starbase on a trailer soon after. Further back, we can also see that demolition of the remaining vertical tank pedestals has resumed. The chopsticks have seen a lot of attention this week, however that work has been focused on the catch rail systems, which flyover images tend not to see. In this image from Lab Padre's Rover 2 cam, we can see the right chopstick has the original dampers and actuator replaced and four additional dampers have been added to the previously unused mounts. Speaking virtually with the Tesla owner's Silicon Valley at the X takeover on July 28th, Elon stated that Flight 5 vehicles should be ready in two to three weeks with regulatory approvals from the FAA possible as soon as late August or early September. Before we finish this week, on July 29th, the FAA released a draft tiered environmental assessment for Boca Chica operations. In general, this document outlines the request for increased cadence of Starship flights and also included this site layout that shows us what the expansion of Orbital Pad B should look like. This includes the expansion of the shared tank farm as we've already seen activity from the air. Something new here is the mention of an air separation unit for production of liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen on site. Take a look at this render created by the space engineer illustrating what these new plans might look like in 3D. And that's it for episode 52 of Starbase Flyover Update. Thank you for choosing to fly with RGV Aerial Photography and I hope you all enjoyed the flight. If you liked what you saw today, Please subscribe for more episodes and content so you don't miss out on the new videos each week and leave a thumbs up. We'll see you next week from 10,500 feet. That's all for now.